off the teacher by being all the way in the boys' line. There was no concept of gay. Gay did not exist. The only thing I knew for sure was that I was going to trick the world. In first grade, I befriended a boy named Gary, who I'd slip into the boys' bathroom with and chat while he used the restroom. Gary was able to keep my secret identity, and I needed that. I needed allies who could pass me off as one of the boys. Now, if I really needed to use the restroom, I would simply raise my hand during class when no one was around. Of course, there were people who knew I was a girl, but the less that knew my secret, the better. I was able to pass myself off as a boy in grade school, and I even had a girlfriend. Her name was Jane. She would say in great exclamation as we were caught holding hands on the playground, She's a boy! I was honored that she would stand up to the few who would ask her to say something. Now, growing up in Indiana, and at the age of six, What's a kid to think? Gay? I didn't know the word. I just thought, I like girls. And in order to get girls, I thought I had to be a boy. I mean, I felt like a boy. I looked like a boy. I thought, hey, I can do this. Another thing I liked to do was to walk through my neighborhood, feeling like a real boy, donning my sock necktie. <laughs> I felt on top of the world. Now in fifth grade, a new girl had moved to our school, a cheerleader no less. Now Jane had moved away and I was devastated. But this new girl actually inquired about my status. Who is that? Oh, that's Tracy. But she's a girl. Dang it. I guess word was getting around. Now in grade school, I was friends with cheerleaders, jocks, band geeks, and nerds. I played football with the boys and Barbies with the girls. As long as I could be kin. <laughs> Another game I liked to play was called Movie Stars, because I got to be the guy. And we got to make out. Well, I mean in a movie star kind of way. You know, you make out for 30 seconds by touching lips, and then the girl runs out the door. Well, middle school was just awkward. I was starting to get boobs, and I couldn't hide the fact. And basketball practice required me to get a bra. I mean, that was devastating. But on a positive note, my basketball coach looked like a Playboy centerfold. <laughs> she had long blonde hair and makeup you could see for miles. She had the mouth of a sailor, and I would have killed for her. I would do unlimited suicides on the gym floor just to get her attention. Now in eighth grade, my crush was my science teacher. Everybody hated her. She was a bitch. Just my type. <laughs> <laughs> she looked like a modern day Taya Leone with a strut and tight pants that would burn the sidewalk and a brain so big you just had to get an A in her class to get noticed. Well, another way I would get noticed was to ride my bike by her house. <laughs> well, until I saw her husband out mowing the lawn, how dare he? <laughs> so when high school was ready for me, I was ready for it. I immersed myself in band and sports as to not think about girls and to stay out of trouble. That is until I met her a friend I would develop such a crush on, but I could never say anything, because it would ruin our friendship. I mean, we did everything together. Car chases, which resulted in me driving by her house while the car was still moving, and her jumping out. We played tennis together, Nerf basketball, in her bedroom, and basketball is a contact sport. Well, anyway, I was in my best friend's bedroom, and. I had this overwhelming thought. I thought, I'm never going to be able to be truly happy unless I have the penis. I prayed for God to help me. I thought, I'm only ever going to be able to have moments of just being close to someone in this life. It isn't fair. My friends started developing crushes on boys, and 
I just wanted to get out of high school and away from the pain of seeing her with someone else. So I left for college in August, and the university I was attending was, it was very conservative at the time. And I still wasn't, I didn't know what the concept of gay was. I didn't know the word gay. I just knew I loved sports. So I joined the women's rugby team. <laughs> <laughs> so, if I didn't know the word gay then, <laughs> I would surely know it now. So, the women's rugby team, by today's definition, was like an Olivia Cruz on land. <laughs> it was like women talking openly about being with other women. I was like... It was just like nothing I had ever experienced. I mean, I'm from Indiana. I was like, whoa. And I met a friend on the team named Andy, and she invited me over to her house one day after practice. And she introduced me to her roommate named Joni, who also happened to be her ex-girlfriend. Well, Joni just stared at me like I had two heads. Maybe I didn't. And what I later found out was that Joni happened to be in one of my lecture halls full of about 500 people, and I found out that she used to follow me after class. And then, <laughs> later, she reached out to me by following me home after class. She followed me home. <laughs> well, you have to remember back then, we didn't have Facebook or the internet, and uh, so stalking someone seemed perfectly legitimate. <laughs> So, shortly after Joni started stalking me, we started dating. <laughs> and uh, things were going great. Until the major I was studying required me to go on an externship for a year out of state. But I was going to get to go to Boston. And I thought, hey, the idea of a romantic, long distance relationship. Wow, I was excited. <laughs> she was not. But I thought she would wait for me. She did not. I was devastated. And the only thing I could eat for like a year was all bon pain sandwiches. I literally lost like 25 pounds. And I still wasn't out to my parents. And my mom was flying up to visit me. And we didn't really talk about what was going on, but it was nice having her there to take my mind off of everything. So my mom flew back to Indiana, and I was on the phone with my parents, and they asked me a question. Tracy, is there anything you want to tell us? <laughs> the phone was just silent. And then my dad asked another question. Tracy? Is it Joni? Wow. The moment I had been waiting for. Yes, I said. The biggest weight had been lifted off my shoulders. About a year later, my little brother came out to my parents. I asked him why he waited so long. He said, well, I wanted to see what mom and dad's reaction was with you. <laughs> Siblings. Um, so I have to say today, I'm happy with who I am. I'm out at work. I have a wonderful family and girlfriend. And it takes me back to that moment in time in my best friend's bedroom when I had those thoughts that I could only be close to someone, you know, and, and not really experience love. Those overwhelming thoughts, thoughts I thought could never really come true, suddenly had real meaning. And even though I had experienced heartbreak, I wasn't left out of experiencing real love. Thank you.